can be gained. Vocal and skills, uh, there's only so when, much you can do. When in doubt, I can just start pausing the game randomly, too. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Jesus. Shots, shots okay, uh, trolling aside, we've got ourselves a pretty exciting game here. Yeah, LGD China versus Team Zenith. Uh, a matchup where I would say these two teams are quite evenly matched. LGD China, they looked rather shaky in the group stages and going into their... Before the match versus Rattlesnake, if you had looked at LGD China versus Zenith, I would have said Zenith stomped them 2-0 because LGD China did not look to be informed, but they showed a much different style of drafting, sort of a more modern approach. Reminded you a lot of kind of what IG does with multiple heroes that get farm, more aggression around the map, not relying so much on Silar or Shao 8 to do it all themselves with the map control early on from Shao 8 and the big farm on Silar. So based on how they played against Rattlesnake, if they play a similar style, I actually think they might even be the favorites in this match, particularly because Zenith, as good of a player as Miracle is, ultimately he's not XY, the team is not quite as comfortable with him, and I think XY is really the most stable player on Zenith. He won't be playing today, Miracle will be steady. And so for me, I would say this is going to be an incredibly even matchup. Yeah, to me, Miracle, in the series against IG, he played amazing, but the problem was it affected the overall Zenith style. They just looked a lot right. more sort of safe, passive, defensive. It was kind of like reminded me of when Lodo was playing with Zenith. The big problem was it's not that Lodo's a bad player, it's that he didn't fit into the Zenith playstyle, or it sort of made Zenith change their playstyle, which is what has happened a bit with Miracle. Maybe over time they could adjust, but he just doesn't quite gel as much as, as well... XY does, and XY is just such a key component to this team that it does sort of give them some doubts. But LGD China, also a team who've had a few changes re re recently. We've got Long DD drafting for one thing, and Zhao Wei on that support role. Oh, I'm just reading the chat right now, reacting. But yeah, I mean, to basically echo what you said, I don't think it's that Miracle's a worse player. It's exactly what you said is it forces their hand to play a different kind of style. And I actually want to point out, LGD has banned out Tinker this game. So even though there's no XY, there's still X Freedom. Uh, I think actually did Yamate play it for them in their last match? I didn't cast that one, so I was only watching it on and off. But uh, they have quite a few Tinker players. And in any case, I think getting rid of this hero is smart. At the end of the day, you're LGD China. You go for the early loan Druid. You probably want to take those outer towers by like the 25, 30 minute mark at the latest. So we'll see what they go for here. But I think getting rid of Tinker anytime you're versus Zenith, even if there's no XY, still a pretty smart choice also like the ban from zenith here removing the juggernaut we all know about the juggernaut lone druid pushing combo with the healing ward that won't be available and what do you make of this bane ban that's the one that sort of sits out of me as being a little bit surprising just a, a counter to the gyrocopter i suppose i guess i mean it's a good hero to have if you're going for a sort of bkb you know, team it's generally picked against heroes like lifestealer but it's an unusual pick here to, to a certain extent i definitely agree and i I, it's a hero that IG and Orange have used as a support in their matches, but we haven't seen, I, at least I don't think we've seen LGD China use it yet. And it's a little odd because one of the big benefits to Bane, obviously, is the support uh, or the setup disable. Sure, you, you have your, your disruption, but the Nightmare is a great initiation stun in the laning stage, but they already have Shadow Demon, so it does feel a little bit unnecessary. I can only imagine they view it as a direct counter to Gyrocopter, and in some ways it is. Zenith may be looking towards a one-carry lineup. That's generally why you would ban out a hero like Bane. If you're picking up multiple carries, well, he can only enfeeble one. He can only feed script one, so we'll see what they do the rest of the way, but... Uh, Zenith starting with the Bat Rider. They have some heroes they can really punish in the mid game, like Shadow Demon, Create a Pain. If they could jump these heroes, burst them down, it would be huge. But you got to get the Shadow Demon first in the larger clashes. That's going to be the main issue for them going with this Bat Rider pick. So I think it's a smart response by LGD selecting the Shadow Demon. And for Zenith, well, wide open with their lanes here. They'll go for the puck. So their secondary solo, and it looks like probably a tri lane gyrocopter now. Yeah, probably a trailing gyrocopter, unless they feel they can get away with what, what IG could not, which is the jungle bat rider, something which is very greedy, but if your opponents aren't punishing it, if they're running sort of a suicide off lane and a tr safe lane trailing with lots of pools, then jungle bat rider works fantastic. And Zenith every now and then do go for something a bit more greedy, but I feel, especially in game one against LGD China, they're going to be wanting to go for a more well-rounded strategy, either puck or bat to the off lane. More likely the bat rider, I want to say, with puck as the solo mid, but they could go either way, and then gyrocopter trailing, but... Jericho to try lane, they're great offensively, so we could even see Batrider safe lane. Yeah, and I, I mean, all the matchups here are pretty decent for both team solos. If they get a 1v1 matchup, Lone Jury and Queen of Pain both do reasonably well against uh, Batrider and Puck. It's a slightly more difficult matchup for, say, Queen of Pain if she's in the off lane versus a Batrider, but any of these heroes matching up mid should be pretty even. Uh, so we'll see if the teams both get their 1v1 matchups. LGD, they go back for the Lashrek, a strong dual roaming combo. But who is that third core going to be? Who's going to be their final component for what? I mean, whether it's a tri lane or just a dual roam with three solos? 
Not too many heroes left on the board at this point. The obvious one would be Lifestealer. That's what IG and LGD China have both loved getting their hands on, but obviously he's not available. So what do you think? I, I'm not sure. I'm, I, I predict actually whoever picks Lifestealer more is going to win this series, but so far we haven't seen any Lifestealer picks. I'm actually going to quickly restart my Dota 2 because I plugged in my microphone, so I need to make sure that it's reset. So Well, Zenith have actually gone, gone ahead and picked an Undying. A, a, a kind of troubled support, I have to say. This hero, when I've seen him play, just doesn't seem to work. And the one issue with Undying is, as strong as he is in the tri lane, he is a gamble as a support hero because later on in the game, well, the zombies aren't going to be very useful. Uh, and obviously, he doesn't scale well. He doesn't have any disables. His tombstone eventually can be muscled down. Lone Druid is a great hero for bringing it down in the team fight. So we will see what Zenith does, but looks like an aggressive Five tri lane Rubik, Gyrocopter, Undying. It's going to be probably a Puck solo mid and a Batrider safe lane. And LG, they see that. They're going to pick up a Clockwork as their final choice. So Yao playing the Clockwork in what looks to be potentially a tri lane clock this game. Ooh, I guess if you're wor worried about it, the offensive tri lane, Clockwork actually does decently in the tri lane versus tri lane scenario because of the defensive cogs being able to burn down a lot of mana. So not the worst here, but definitely this looks like a Zenith offensive tri lane. When you've got Gyrocopter as well as Undying, it's, I mean, without a doubt, you're looking at something to punish your opponents and to get aggressive with. Yeah, so over on the side of LGD, we will introduce the players now. Xiao Wait, he is playing support nowadays, not that solo mid that we saw in the last G1 league, not or the last G League, not the off lane play that we saw back in TI2. Xiao Wait back to his support play. He'll be playing that with Shrek Yao on the clockwork. Remains to be seen, but it looks like he'll be heading off lane. Long DD on the other support, the Shadow Demon. We'll have DDC handling the Queen of Pain, now going solo mid, and... I gotta say, I think this role switch from LGD has worked out pretty well. It seems like their in-game decision making has been a bit more polished since they made it. And last but not least, it will be Silar handling the Lone Druid. Yeah, I feel DDC especially on that solo role has actually done really well. A player not known for his solo abilities, but he's he's stepped it up so far. I'm gonna be nice and generous, LD. You can introduce Team Zenith, aka I have not reconnected to the game just yet. Oh, okay, yeah, you're slacking. All right, on the side of Zenith, we have Ice. Going to be playing that Rubik. Ice, Ice, Ice going to be handling the Batrider offlane. And we all know about his ability to frustrate his opponents in that offlane role. X-Freedom going to be on the Undying. Again, that support that hasn't necessarily had the most success in the Asian scene lately. Yamate handling the solo mid puck. And Miracle going to be the safe lane jar off the bat. A, a bit of a skirmish at the rune. DDC hasn't skilled anything yet. Can simply blink away. Will do so. But an early win there for Zenith doing a lot of damage to DDC. So they're actually trilating the Queen of Pain. Uh, it looks like, or maybe but doing some dual roaming. It's the better option if you're going to be in that tri lane versus tri lane, because Silo Lone Druid, not a hero that offers anything to a tri lane scenario. Zhao Wei, really smart D ward here, puts it across the river, because when you're going with that offensive tri lane, you generally want to put that observe ward on your side of the river for that early level one clash. Yeah, so a nice D ward there, and off the bat, in terms of vision, what do we have right now? Just Zenith with a sentry ward in the lane, really don't see a whole lot, and when you're running this kind of tri lane, you really want to be able to contest the neutrals because LGD, they have a great lineup to farm neutrals. Lashrac as well as Shadow Demon. Once they hit, say, level 2 or 3, they can do it. And the Queen of Pain generally won't need that much help uh, unless Batrider has level... The only way this Queen of Pain is going to die, basically, is if she gets lifted, blows her blink, and then gets thrown back in by a Flame Break. So outside of that, DDC, sure, he might be under heavy harassment, but they can look to pull and pull ahead. So not having vision could cause Zenith, but off the bat, doing some pulling of their own. And I think the tri lane going pretty well so far for Zenith, especially with that early clash, really limiting DDC's ability to be aggressive here. Yeah, this is where it's a lot easier to go for an offensive tri lane on the Radiant side than it is on the Dire side, because if your opponents are pulling and starving you for XP and gold, you can do the same thing with this big camp. Pull it, pull it as well, deny some XP, get some maybe farm of your own. LGD will come in and snipe a few creeps here, but it does mess with this creepy rule of game. Yeah, they may actually get the, the Centaur here, or not the Centaur, the Ursa, the Hellbear Smasher. Uh, they will pick it up. So that's a big win for LGD. And look at our other two lanes quickly. Bottom lane, Clockwork versus Gyrocopter. A matchup where generally Clockwork won't die, but is definitely going to be on the back foot. He doesn't really want to cog a Gyro and eat Rocket Barrage. He wants to just push him away, burn his mana. Miracle off the bat. City of 3 and 2. Our Clockwork Yao actually winning the lane, but I imagine as Miracle levels up and gets some more damage on his Gyro, that will start to equalize. And then the middle lane. Silar on the Lone Druid, handling Yamate's Puck 1v1. An easy matchup for the Lone Druid, as long as he doesn't get ganked. And Zen don't really have the best ganking supports. One of the downsides to that Undying, among others, is that he's not a great ganker. And with the bear, Silar can actually control the runes quite well. It's going to be hard for Yamate to do anything, but Bottle Crow and pretty much farm in the slade. Yeah, they're banking a lot on this trial and getting themselves some kill. And right now, LGD just playing it as safely as possible. They know that 
Queen of Pain is not their main carry. They sent the Lone Druid mid, and this was the big change in LGD's laning setup to react to this offensive trailing, which is going to secure them a good start. I think the laning advantage goes to LGD. It's going to come down to Zenith to sort of make some plays, try get themselves some kill, or at least some rotations around to get those ganks. But like you mentioned, not the best ganking lineup. Uh, so for anyone who's having audio issues with Gods' microphone, he had to re-plug it into his computer. But if you hear me, just switch audio channel, switch on to Valat. So I think switch to no broadcaster and then come back to us, and it should be fine. A lot of other people are saying it is working for them. Just a Dota TV bug. If one of the commentators has to reconnect, then unfortunately their microphone, their audio won't work for you until you restart your channel. The other option is just to reconnect to Dota TV, and it should fix it. So our apologies for that, but should be a relatively simple solution. And, well, back to the game where, in terms of farm, it looks like it's heavily going LGD, and, uh, or LGD China's way. And so far, Zenith not really able to do anything with this trial, and they'll actually rotate ice off the lane. But it's just that undying support. I mean, it's hard to actually get a kill, and it's also a smart reaction by LGD. Sending Queen of Pain here, a hero who's particularly adept at dodging that aggression. Yeah, it looks like Ice just trying to get a ward down here near the top river. Could even look for a rotation mid early on, but he'd have to get a telekinesis on Silent because there's no level 60 on Yamate. So he looks like he's just going to be headed back top lane. And for Zenith, this is a bit of a worry. I think Clockwork's doing a lot better than he should, partly because he got it's a bit of an easier matchup against the Gyrocopter than the Batrider, but it looked like Zenith wanted to give Miracle the solo XP. Yeah, I mean, part of it is that just the Gyrocopter doesn't have the best base damage, and I think that's where you have a stout shield on your Clockwork. He's a pretty tanky hero. Uh, Yao's been doing a nice job of not necessarily denying the creeps, but just disrupting the last hitting of Miracle. And uh, for Miracle, he'll start to see us better as he gets more levels, but it's where often you'll see a lot of other teams, European teams even, will pull their Gyro, let him start with the Wraith Band, give him some, give him some HP regen, because those first few waves are quite hard to last hit. Sure, Gyro has a great, a great animation, but with such low base damage, he gets a little bit tougher. But again, as the lane progresses, we'll expect to see him get more CS. He'll actually zone Yao out of the lane nicely here, but well, Yao's just going to wander around. The other good thing going Yao's way is he's got a bottle. Lone Druid doesn't need runes, so Yao finds himself a haste rune. Also, Lone Druid doesn't really need the courier, so he can actually bottle Crow if he needs the courier heading top at the moment. But right now, they can prioritize a lot on Clockwork, just having an even time at bottom lane, which he's pretty much got right now. And with this haste rune, he's going to hit level 6 soon. We could look for a gank or possibly even maybe a solo kill on the Gyrocopter, though it's always going to be hard with Rocket Brass, so probably more likely pick up a TP scroll and try to gank one of these other side lanes. Now, I really feel like Zenith needs to do LGD and style 5 man in this game. Once you get your, your Puck level 7 or level 6, we'll have a quick disconnect from Ice. Once you have your Gyrocopter with his core items in level 7, which he's almost there, they need to go and start forcing fights because the laning stage just is not working out to their benefit and their support on Dying is not going to scale well into the late game. The issue is LGD have great counter initiate. Queen of Pain, good at surviving Shadow Demon, good at delaying until Clockwork shows up. And the one thing is Lone Druid can't join the fight, so that's where at least you get a 5v4 top. But if you just sit back and farm, well, Silar's crushing mid. As you would expect, Lone Druid's going to have the better end of this matchup. The bottom lane is a wash, and it shouldn't be a wash, but it's a safe lane gyro. You'd expect Miracle to have a slight edge here at least, but it is. LGD, they're quite content to sit back and farm. If you're Zenith, even though it's risky, I think you just have to go for it. Send four or five heroes top, try and pick a fight, try and force the tower, because city bank and farming is just not going to favor you. And it's not like there's a Batrider getting a Blink Dagger early to justify sitting back. Uh, maybe the Puck Blink, but by the time you get that, LGD are going to be so far ahead. Yeah, I definitely agree they need to do something such as screw Vamp as 5 and look for no early towers. When you've got an Undying as one of your supports, you're looking to get sort of an early game advantage to be aggressive. And right now, Zenith aren't or they're trying to with their offensive trial, but they're not getting anything. LGD trying to just playing this too well at the top lane. So when you're undying, isn't getting sure of early kills and early advantage, your only real backup plan is to group up as five and use his powerful team fight with the Tombstone, the Decay, the Sora. Because if this goes late game, undying becomes somewhat irrelevant up against a lone druid. There's just so many uh, just better options for the LGD side in the mid to late game. Right, it's, you know, it's why we were talking about at the drafting stage, that he's kind of a star cross support. He's a support that we don't see a whole lot of in Asia. And when we do, it comes with mixed results. You obviously can have the amazing games where you get like 10 decay stacks up and you're just killing everyone, zombie apocalypse style, left for dead style. But there's also the other situations, the ones we're seeing now, where he doesn't get anything accomplished in the laning stage. And if he stays there, it really hurts them. But for the moment, Zenith content to sit back continue to try and get what they can out of the lanes. LGD really pulling ahead in terms of the farm war. We're seeing a Shadow Demon already at level 4, way ahead of the other supports in this tri lane. The one good thing is Batrider is farming, well, I mean, not even that well. Uh, he's 15 to 4, which I guess is okay, considering the number of pulls, but it really just comes down to 
Uh, it comes down to, I guess, them just wanting to get the Blink Dagger on Yamate, cause for the, or maybe hoping for a Lucky Rune here. Is for the moment, no effort whatsoever to create aggression, but a Haste Rune will be popped by Yao, and the Rune will spawn top. The Bear wasn't in position, but it'll only be a DD on a support on Dai, which is really not a big deal. Yeah, he has to pick it up. The Bear was coming to deny it. Puck was hoping to go for it, and Puck, you haven't really got mana for your full triple combo right now, which means Puck can't really gank. Yamate picked up this early TP scroll thinking, hey, if I get a Rune, I can look for a TP gank, but right now he's out of mana. He's forced to do a bit of bottle crowing, and I think this is the one here is Zenith wanted to get involved fairly early on, but they can't do it right now, just entirely because of mana problems. It'll be an interesting situation if he ever gets the mana, if he looks to go, because right, the longer this goes, the more and more levels and items your Queen of Pain starts to get. She'll get tankier once she picks up, say, your power treads, which I imagine will be an early choice, and if you can't instantly kill Shadow Demon, he just disrupts Queen of Pain, and then Clockwork TPs in. The fight will turn around quickly. So it's understandable they're reluctant to go because of that clockwork being the potential counter initiator and having such a good start on Yao. But the longer this goes, the more and more our lone jurid. The big problem is just free farm on Silo, who's already got a Helm of Iron Will up on his bear. Now sitting on another thousand gold. If he wants to rush an armlet, he's really not far off. I mean, actually doing the math, I think he's like 700, 800 gold away from it. Maybe even a little bit less. That's a really fast armlet. And if you do leave mid, Silar can even look to take the tier one mid himself. So it's a tough situation for Zenith, but I feel like you gotta force something because just sitting back and farming continues to favor LGD more and more. Now up to a 2k gold lead, now up to a 1.5k experience lead. And Gyro, well, he's way behind. 33 CS to Silar's 50, and all of those lane creeps as well. Yeah, and Yamate just went back all the way back to Fountain to refill his bottle and heal up. He then had to TP back mid because, like you mentioned, if he leaves the lane, Sila pushes the tower. But he TP back mid just to push out the lane and then immediately rotates top. He probably wanted to TP top, but he knew he had to go mid, push out the lane. Because if he, he's not there defending the T1 tower, it's an, such an obvious move that he's somewhere ganking. But right now, he's not going top yet. He's hoping to get a, a rune at the 8-minute mark. But once again, the bear's there to deny it. Yeah, it's exactly what we talked about as soon as the planes came out, is Lone Druid actually wins the rune control war versus a Puck if the supports aren't in play. And well, when you have an Undying as well as a Rubik, not really the best roaming combo, so they're, and they're kind of forced to sit top. Otherwise, LGD, they just free pull, they get a lot of farm, and still not even a kill attempt in this lane. I... Silas CS is just disgusting right now. 60, yeah. And now a root. And this is part of the reason why Yamate's been forced to, to bottle crow so much to go back to base. He gets rooted, he loses about a third of his health instantly. Just from the root and a couple of auto attacks. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't taken too much damage until now. He's always had those ball charges. But now that Silas hit level, level 7, level 8, he has the Helm of Iron Will on his spirit base so we can tank so much more. This lane's becoming really easy for him. And when 9 minutes in, we haven't seen a kill. And that definitely favors LGD's lineup right now. Yeah, the gold lead favors them, the hero composition favors them. The later this goes, the better and better it will look for LGD. Sure, a really fat gyro could outcarry carry alone Druid in theory, but he's not going to be really fat at the rate he's farming. City at 48 CS, it's decent farm, and as mentioned, he will pick up in this lane as the lane progresses. He gets more damage, but Here we go top. yeah, finally we're going to see a bit of a rotation in. A smoke in from Yamate. But even though they don't actually see him, they are playing pretty defensively. It's tough to dive here. It's somewhat obvious at this point. And although Yamate hasn't been revealed, I think it's only a matter of time before this gank fails. And even if they go, Yao's got a TP, Yao is level 8. Be very yeah. wary about diving this tower. That's Yao's role right now, because LGD, they don't need to rotate or do anything, but as soon as there's a gank from this puck, that's where Clockwork will go for the counter ganks. And look at Lone Druid, he's pushing mid. They know puck is top, because Lone Druid sees no one at mid lane. It's an obvious gank. Here comes the counter gank coming out from Clockwork. Just oh, in no. direction. LGD's going in first, and they're the ones with the great defense. Two heroes split Earth. Queen of Pain ultimate. There's your first blood almost 10 minutes in, and now the orb flying forth. On Yamate on the run, Yao giving chase under the tower. The tombstone gets brought down. Two heroes dead. That battery cell cancels one TP. Can it cancel two? Just out of rage for the second one. A triple for DDC. That safe lane Queen of Pain and Zenith in a world of trouble now. Look at the gold graph. On top of that, they lose the tier one mid. Yes, they're pushing bottom, but Miracle, he's barely even dented this tower. This is a disaster and a half for Zenith. LGD just read Zenith like a book there. They knew what they knew Puck is top because guess what? Lone Druid's pelting away in the T1 tower. Even with him smoked up, they knew where he was. They it was actually LGD who initiated in, like you said. Clockwork TP's in as the disruption went, and they were like, this is the easiest fight to take with Sonic Wave on three heroes, scream to follow it up. The burst damage from LGD actually exceeds Zenith. Zenith need to be the one starting the fight off with a coil and a waning rift. If they don't do that, they lose the fight because LGD trying to have too much burst damage. They don't even have lasso yet. They don't even have lasso. We're now 11 minutes in, and it feels like 
well, at this point, Zenith just got figured out by LGD very early in this draft. It would certainly be for the lanes if it began. LGD expected the offensive try lane. That's why they sent Queen of Pain top. Knew that if the puck was mid, Lone Druid could win that matchup. And off lane clock, I don't think they expected to win that lane or even break even. But, hey, it's fine. If it, It's just bonus. It's gravy if he does. It's not necessary for their strategy. They had the TP ready on Clockwork. They were fully prepared for what Zenith wanted to do. And I'm not sure that Zenith has a great plan B, because sure, you have a gyrocopter, he can flash farm, but you haven't been stacking the neutrals for him. You haven't been stacking the ancients for him. So even if they start to do it now, by the time he's got big camps to farm, your lone druid has his armlet probably well on his way to his maelstrom, assuming he completes the armlet, which a casual helm of iron will isn't bad on itself. But yeah, completed armlet now up, and LGD sitting a 4k gold lead, 3k experience lead. I'm glad that Zenith have finally given up on that tri lane, even though it hurts, even though their lineup was built to win that lane. It's not going to happen. So they have to try something different. They have to go back now, start stacking the camps, and taking that gyrocopter into the mid game, into the late game. Yeah, plan B has got to be, well, in some ways, it's going to be a short term. They're going to start falling further behind because LGD China are going to be getting more and more farm, winning more lanes. But for Zenith, it's about getting the blink up on Batrider, start stacking for the gyrocopter, who's getting quite a decent amount of stacks going here in the jungle. And once those blink daggers are up on both Puck as well as Batrider, that's where they start five manning because Miracle's going for a fast BKB. and. Those three things will happen at around the similar time. ISI size, 1,500 gold, Puck, 1,400 gold, and Gyrocopter, pretty close to his BKB. So once those things are up, three items are up, that's where they go for their five-man Dota. Yeah, and they have if they can get the initiation on LGD, I think they'll be in pretty good shape. They just mainly need to either, with a Blink Dagger on your Puck, you can actually catch out uh, a Shadow Demon fairly reliably. Just blink, blink it on top of him, silence him, and then you don't have to waste the lasso on him. You can use the lasso on higher priority targets, like, say, the Queen of Pain. That would probably be the ideal here to bring down. Lone Druid's a bit tanky. LGD, they get the tier 1 top, and it's quite easy. With a Lone Druid Bear with an Armlet, as well as Max Edict on Xiao 8, nothing they could do. So LGD, they ran a defensive trailing, but they were fully prepared to get aggressive in the mid game, and they're actually going to be the ones smoking up, looking to create some pressure here, man. And what a timey window it is. Puck has a haste rune, yes, but... This is right before the blinks come out. Smoke will be spotted out by X Freedom, and he'll get away. Yeah, so nice job was, by him. Well, a, a bit of luck, lucky timing and positioning for him. They tried to sneak on past, and well, X Freedom kind of lucks out a bit there with his timing. Spots out the smoke gank, but LGD, they decide just to group up mid. They may even go for Rochan here, and this is the big problem. Until those big three items I was talking about are up on Zenith, LGD China can do anything. They can roach, they can push towers. They can go as five, and they, they have nothing to be afraid of until those blink daggers are up. Yeah, they almost have their mech, in fact. Look at Yao, he's sitting on a buckler, sitting on the recipe. This is an offlane clockwork versus a gyrocopter, which is one of the heroes that gives clockwork a bit of a trouble in the laning stage, because you can always harass him with flat counter without coming near cog range, and if he does try to cog you and he catches you, you probably die to rocket barrage. So, not an easy matchup, but wow, look at that tower. Just melts to the edict damage, and now LGD, Grouped up bottom, going to continue to push here. Not going to give up any of their towers without a fight. And that's one concern for Zenith, is yes, they have a gyro who can clear waves fastly, but they, they, fast, they don't have anyone who can sit in the lane and tank the tower, tank the damage, and muscle it down until the BKB comes out. They don't have a frontline specialist, and Undying, support Undying, in theory can be that. If he's got a max decay, if he's got a lot of levels and farm, he is nothing. It's a support Undying who can't offer much. So they lose a tier two for free, and I don't think they're even getting this tier one. Zenith just giving up a lot and gaining very little, but they do have the blink on Ice 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 now. Yeah, the question is, are they too far behind with these Blink Daggers up, with the BKB up? They've got Blink Daggers well on Puck in 100 gold. Uh-oh. Who's actually going to miss? Ice, Ice, Ice. No, he gets he gets, oh. gets caught here by the Cogs, and no Blink Dagger initiation for him. Yao, a Blink forward from Ice, 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 but they did not initiate on the Lone Druid or the Queen of Pain, who are going to be coming to this fight soon, I imagine. No, Xiao 8 not there yet. DDC roaming in. Seems like, well, LGD got caught a bit with their pants down on that fight. It worked out okay. But they didn't even have Queen of Pain available. If she was there, DDC easily gets a double or a triple kill. In spite of that, still a decent fight for LGD China. Not something they'll be particularly unhappy with, as they were farming during that time. They've gotten some items up on their supports. Uh, so Zenith going to have more and more trouble finding those burst kills. Xiao 8 shreds in an urn for him on top of the wand. Long DD, at least Arcane Boots and a wand at some levels. So Zenith, like you said, a lineup that needs to get those early pickoffs. But it gets harder and harder to find them as this game goes on. I think it really rests now with... LGD making a mistake and Miracle getting very fat. I don't really see another option for Zenith. Yeah, and right now Miracle just is not really farming at the same rate as the Lone Druid. Sure, the CS is very similar, but Lone Druid with the Tower Gold, with his, he's going for much more sort of cheap, cost-effective items. Where this BKB, it's a good item, it's an essential item this game, but it's not going to really be the solution to LGD. It'll help him team fight, but 
He needs damage, he needs some sort of better, more late game items on top of the BKB. And he can definitely still die in a team fight. If you get caught in the cogs with the bear, you're dead. If you get, if you get, if you get stunned up by a soul, a soul catcher, a dis, uh, as well as a L L Lashrak stun, you'll die before you even pop that BKB. And even if you're BKB, if you get entangled, you may die too. So it's not an item where he's invulnerable in these team fights by any means. Zenith, they'll smoke up with five. They have the blink on Ice Ice Ice. I think they have to blink on Yamate as well. Double blinks online. They'll go now. There's your lasso. Catches out long DD. They'll try to burst him down. He can't disrupt himself. A great start to this fight for Zenith. Queen of Pain all comes through. Stolen by Ice. He throws it right back the other way from the <laughs> comfort of the Roshan pit. What a sensational support play. And a big win there for Zenith. The double blinks, the smoke gank. Well, LGD, they had to make a mistake, and they made a big one there. Great play from Zenith. Yeah, I think that was more just amazing play and timing from Zenith. The Lasso onto the Shadow Demon. Whenever you go, at this point in the game, you've got to go on the Shadow Demon. Because if you go on someone else, Disruption will just keep him alive. It's the one target you've got to kill first. And then, the Puck, he goes on everyone else. Rubik was in the perfect place to steal the Sonic Wave, and Puck just escaped out of there on low HP. Three kills going the way of Zenith, then. Well, the Blink Daggers, they're paying off. I mean, I asked if they were too far behind, but right now, they're starting to catch up with those two good fights. In spite of that, they don't get a tower off of that fight. They don't really secure yeah. any map control. So it's a nice fight for Zenith. They need a lot more than that. They also didn't get Roche, and now Maelstrom is up on Silar's Bear. If they want to go Roche, this will not take very long. Uh, maybe a medallion would be needed to do it quickly. But also, one thing for LGD is they didn't have a key item of their own. They didn't have that Orchid on Queen of Pain, and that's such a big item. Versus a hero like Batrider, he jumps in, silence him. Puck jumps in, silence him, and then you're not phase shifting away. Gyrocopter, obviously not as ideal of a target since he'll have his BKB now, but... LGD, they lose a fight, no problem. Straight into the Roshan pit. Still feels like LGD's pretty comfortable right now with this gold lead, and once they have an Aegis on Silar, can start to push, but the only thing they have to be careful about is just Zenith getting the jump on them like that. As long as Shadow Demon doesn't get caught, I think LGD will take the fight, but if he does, then it's anybody's game. Yeah, if Zenith get the jump and get the better initiation, then they can fight. But up against an Aegis, it's a lot hard to do so. And uh, we'll see that picked up uncontested by LGD. But it's all resting on just picking off the Shadow Demon with the Batrider and Puck on the other one. The Orchid is nice, but it's not really a solution. Because if you blink Lasso fast enough, the Orchid isn't going to be coming in. You really have to sort of be in the perfect position there for Queen of Pain. So it's hard to do so. And right now, I think the way Zenith are doing this, they got Ice 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 kind of split pushing and just putting some pressure on top lane. This is going to make it a lot harder for LGD China to go for those next T2 towers. Yeah, now that Gyrocopter has his BKB, he's not as worried about getting caught out and dying on his own. Hopefully he can TP away in engagement. He's actually lurking top, but there is a lane ward which has spotted his movement out. It'll spot all well, the rest of Zenith, because they're not even smoked. They just strut into the lane, and LGD says, sees a five-man clash, and looks like they want to take it. Yao lurking here, he's got the hook available, has the mech as well. Probably wants to save this to counter-initiate, I feel, rather than jumping in first. But we will see. If he finds a target, he'll certainly go and invis Yamate. They did see the five heroes top. They know they're here, but do they know that Yamate is this invis or it doesn't look like it? No sentries deployed in the lane just yet. Just a lot of paints coming out. I think for Long DD, yeah, it really needs to sit a little bit farther back behind the towers. Yamate now circles around. This could be a huge coil. Can he find the opening? He's got the blink. No, everyone's going to back, so. No, they're going to catch a retreating ice. Ice will get picked off here. And that should be it. Just nice not, frame play. Yeah, not really the best retreat from Zenith. Probably should have all just gone back down the lane, but a little chaotic from them, giving up a, a free kill to LGD. There was a moment where Yamate could have got a five-man dream coil silence off, but there was just no backup, unfortunately. It looked like a great opportunity for Zenith, but the rest of the team was spotted out. There's an LGD China lane ward at the top lane, which made it too hard for them to get in position. They can't all be in this, only Yamate was. Yeah, and uh, like like mentioned, they had the Observer Ward there, and they didn't know Yamate was invis, but didn't matter in the end. We'll have a blink in, but there was the silence. Ice, Ice, Ice cannot get his coil or his ultimate off, and now Xiao Wei doing a decent amount of damage with his Enoch, but actually pushed off the coil. Miracle just mans up and kills everyone. Where is the Lone Druid Bear in the midst of this fight? It only now shows up. Silar was just not there for the entirety of the engagement. And without Silar, well, they don't have any follow-up damage. You kill, you drive the Batrider back, Black, you back, you bring him low. Can't kill him off, man. Silar not being there really costing LGD. Yeah, he's not being there. He is trying to 1v5 defend right now with four of his teammates dead. But yeah, where, where was he? He's going for this armlet maelstrom build, which is sort of that early game team fight brawling item. But we're just not really seeing it from Silar right now. He wasn't at the fight. Zenith punished him for that. And that was not a great initiation from Zenith. Batrider got silenced and almost burst down to start things off. And Zenith, they still capitalized. The BKB up on Miracles would have been the decisive item there. And now we're seeing a lot of XP go the way of Miracle as well. He hits level 14, so his damage 
can come from those levels. Not to mention he's now got 2.2k gold, so we can see him start building his late game items. Yeah, now it gets a little scarier because Miracle's going to have that next item. I mean, maybe we'll even see him try and rush something like an MKB here. Uh, Manta style, obviously an option. I don't think we'll see uh, the Divine Rapier yet. You really want to have the Aegis, and they don't really have the map control to claim the next Roshan, guaranteed. They're closer, though, with double Blink Dagger with the Tier 1 falling mid. If Zenith can win, say, one or two more big fights, then the map control will go back their way. And you got to feel like LGD, that's two bad fights in a row. The, the first one... The first one just straight up bad for them. The second fight didn't look as bad with the Great Silence, but there was no Lone Druid there. They weren't in position, they weren't prepared. They'll blink in now, they'll catch out Ice Ice Ice, but he's still in Firefly. Create a Paid Ult thrown in, as well as a Hook. Looks like they will kill off Ice Ice Ice, an expensive kill at that, but they get a much needed kill, which means for Zenith, they'll sit back, they'll farm. But it was a five hero gank in the end, so not the yeah. biggest loss. It was expensive, but it was actually really well executed because killing Ice 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 there was not going to be easy. The blink screen prevented the blink dagger, and then you still had to hit that hook shot to secure the kill. So LGD executed really well, but it's still like committing five heroes for that while the rest of Zenith, they're kind of farming their own neutrals. They were farming mid lane, and now they're actually going to go for a smoke gang. Again. So Zenith. Zenith are making things happen, and LGD China aren't being quite as efficient the last couple of minutes. Yeah, it feels like there's a disconnect with LGD China. Their lineup, well, it's all about the Lone Druid gets his armlet Maelstrom. That's why you go that build, and then you just start 5 manning. But unfortunately, they get initiated upon, and it looks like Yao will be the one caught here. A blink, a silence after a coil thrown back into a call down. Yao mechs himself up. Won't be enough. He'll go down. And even though the TP's come, it looks like they might be too late from the sidelines. And Xiao Wei misses his split earth, and there is still a BKB. Diving Miracle is dangerous, but with the bear here, if they get a root, he might be in trouble. He will pop his BKB. He'll continue to run. They need a root. They're just not getting it. Without the roots, I don't think they can take this. There's your root, but a blink. And once again, the last they're going to find Long DD in the middle of the fight. Bring him down fast. Silar has the Aegis, but his bear's not doing much of this fight, and he's on the run. He's isolated from his team. The backup is coming. It comes from DDC, but with no ultimate, what can he do? Your root on Ice Ice Ice. Finally driven back a little bit. Silar has a bear resummon. He'll do it now. He'll pop into ulti form. Yamate jumps in. Looks to go at DDC. Wants to bring him down. DDC is low. He'll blink away just out of range of the flame ring. Now the medical assist assistance comes in in the form of that earth charge of the chase going the other way but i don't know if they can actually kill zenith yes they can there's your split earth finally shall we lands one really has been searching for those this game x freedom the bear chasing him maybe a slight moment of miss micro there as silar stops moving his hero but now we'll just continue to push so I, I mean lgd again not the best fight but with the aegis it was enough yeah that was not a good fight for them all things considered but zenith with puck and background ultimates on cooldowns it looks like lgd china will get a t2 tower out of this but I feel like LG China should have got a lot more for the Aegis there. They only got the Rubik kill. There was Undying out of position at one point. Batrider almost got brought down, but they just couldn't do it. They couldn't finish off these key heroes. And Zenith are looking in a much more even position now. Eagle Song is the item choice for Gyrocopter. So he's going to be hitting level 16. And it's going to be a Butterfly pickup, which is nice against the Lone Druid. It's not a whole lot of damage output, but it's nice sort of for the survivability as well as the attack speed. Yeah, it's definitely not as so much damage as, say, an MKB. It's still a lot, though. I think some people do underestimate a butterfly. It's plus 60 damage, which is nothing to sneeze at by no means. Granted, not an MKB, but uh, not the 85 damage, but still pretty solid. And if he gets that next item, the Manta style, the, I mean, even something like a Satanic, that's where the butterfly becomes really scary because now you're almost unkillable. With BKB, Lifesteal, and Evasion, Good luck to LGD bringing him down, especially because they don't have a Scythe device. They'll build towards one now on DDC, but he's a long way off. So there's no way to really reliably lock him down and deal with him in these fights, aside from Entangles, which, let's be honest, Silar's Entangle luck has not been the best this game. I wouldn't say it's the reason they're losing, but if they'd gotten early root on the Gyro, he would have died, no questions, early in that fight. Yeah, that would have really helped Manon. And the key thing so far have been Ice 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 playing this Batrider so well against Long DD. Every time he's catching him out, he turned around at the exact moment they needed to basically take him down and cause LGD China to have a lot of issues that fight. We saw it in the previous engagement with Zenith 1. It was always the Lasso onto the Shadow Demon. And short Ice right now is 0 Here 2 comes on that Batrider, but he's still winning. Top lane, he's got a DD. He'll pick off Long DD, I think. No, Disruption gets off. Now he throws out a Soul Catcher. No more wand charges. He'll drop a Purge and Yamate. Yes, he gets the kill on the Shadow Demon, but this time, it looks like he'll pay. Not gonna be able to blink out of that one. He'll bite the dust and, well, trading your life for that of the Shadow Demon. Not a good trade, especially when you consider that he's not that far off the sight device of his own. Ultimate Orb and a thousand gold already banked, so... Uh, giving DDC a little time to farm his and delaying his own. Kind of a blunder there, but Yamate just feeling a little cocky and pays for it. Yeah, he'll be kicking himself a bit for that one. It's not the most costly kill. He wants to start building towards that side of the vice, but it's still something completely unnecessary that he gave up. He's pretty high level as well, so it gave LGD China some nice XP. 
some nice time to, time to keep farming these items. You mentioned the side of ice on Queen of Pain. That's going to give him some time to farm it up. Lone Druid wants to get his Assault Crest up, and Sila getting closer and closer to it. And also, Roshan respawning. That's something which LGD China would love to be picking up in the next couple of minutes. At this point, I feel like LGD China, they need to just kind of bait Zenith into a, uh, an overextension because it feels like when LGD are trying to get aggressive, they're wasting a lot of time that Siler could be farming. They're not really finding openings, and truth be told, they're getting caught out in a lot of cases. So maybe just sit back, farm up the Assault Caress, farm up your Scythe device, and then look to go. Yes, it gives Miracle time to get big, but LGD, it just feels like they don't really have the rhythm to be getting aggressive at this point, and looks like they'll do some dewarding, setting up for that next Roshan you mentioned. On the side of Zenith, I imagine we're going to see a smoke gank soon. X Freedom sitting on a smoke now. Zenith have been pretty successful with these smoke ganks. Frankly, more than I thought they would be versus a team like LGD, who is, if not, if known for not anything else, they're known for their strong defensive play and basically not giving up unnecessary deaths. But this game, they've given up a lot. Yeah, there has been a few silly fights. One, but I, it, I agree. LG trying to sing up for Roshan. And with Roshan not respawning for a minute or two, they're going to decide, go for a smoke gank. Because if they get a kill or two, or a tower maybe, in the next couple of minutes, then they're almost guaranteed Roshan. But right now, if they sit back and farm, the next Roshan will be a lot more difficult. Zenith are also grouped as five, so... Wait a second. Are uh, we seeing another are they, five men? Are they going to smoke right under the ward here oh, from LGD? Wow. <laughs> oh, no, no. Okay, not going to smoke. But just showed all their heroes. So LGD, yeah. they've got the set now. They know which direction to go and where they'll find the pick off. So at least they have a very, very good idea. And they're pinging this big camp, which is being fired by Yamate. They're going to go straight down. Oh, it looks like Miracle is his butterfly, and, and that's actually going to reveal the smoke. Miracle will reveal it with the orb there giving the vision. Miracle wow. will walk near the hill. A bullet dodged. It. That was even luckier than earlier on when Undying scouted out the smoke gate over near the top river. That smoke gate scout by that illusionary orb. And only because Miracle got close enough. That's two smoke ganks avoided just by, I'd say, almost pure luck. I thought, like, the first one, X Freedom, might have been anticipated and just going to kind of clear that area. But the second one, yeah, that's... That's pretty much total luck, the timing. And Zenith, right after that, go for a smoke tank of their own. But LGD are waiting. They're anticipating. Are they going to get that Shadow Demon? The silence was there by DDC. They can't get it off. But Miracle going to work with his Butterfly, driving them all back. The mech keeps them alive. An orb forward. A coil on three. A cooldown on three. The damage is there. They're all exploding. Now Siler forced the TP out. It's just hell on earth for LGD. They'll lose three. They'll buy back on two. They want to fight this with the coil down, with the lasso down. But can they actually do it? Yao still has his hook. They'll lose their Shadow Demon. They they bought back on two, Yao hooks away to safety, and that's probably giving Roche to Zenith. Yeah, and that was a really weird fight, because LGD China were waiting on the high ground, they saw the smoke coming up, they just didn't seem to respond in the right way. Something that I don't, I don't really like is that Yao has actually gone for only one point in cogs. If he blocked that ramp with a level 4 cogs, Zenith would have got destroyed that fight, because only Batrider went up the hill first, and they could have just blocked out that ramp using level 4 cogs, but he's only got level 1. And LGD trying, despite having the better position, got destroyed in that team fight. Yeah, I like what Zenith is doing. It looked for a moment like maybe they would go mid. We'll see a Batrider actually firefly over the top. He doesn't even have his lasso up, just trying to usher everyone away. And I fully agree. That's the biggest strength of Clockwork above all else. It's not his battery salt or his hook. It really is his cogs. And I don't think we're seeing them used very effectively in this game at all, to be quite gentle about it. It's just you expect more. And I think a lot of it is Yao doesn't play this here very often, at least not in official matches. I don't think we've seen him play it once, but Zenith, they won't get Roche. Maybe this actually goes to LGD now, but, uh, well, does it Zenith have another smoke? You know they're coming back in. We'll have a strategy pause here for my size size real quickly. And, uh, no, a lag pause. I'm just kidding, guys. But, uh, yeah, is there a smoke available? Because I think they might be out right now. They've used quite a few. But They've got one more. They've got one more in two seconds. We could see another smoke. I don't know if LGD are going to be ready for yet another. And... LGD have, like, the perfect wards up at this point. They've got one near the mid lane, which hadn't been scouted out, one near Roshan, one at top lane as well. All these wards give them such great map coverage, but the smokes are still working, and they're still being caught out. We'll see. Zenith's just confidently for Ray, and now they have a, a four staff up in their Batrider, so an even easier way to catch out that Shadow Demon. Nope, not going to go just yet. But Zenith are not going to give this Rosh up now. Sure, they didn't get it for themselves, but they have one more smoke. They have their key teamfight items. And LGD, if they go on to lose this game, you got to feel like with the kind of start they had, they should have just been able to calmly five-man and bring down towers with their early armlet bear. It was like a 10-minute armlet. But LGD just getting kind of caught out, giving Zenith an opening back into the game, letting them fire up their blinks, their BKB on the gyro, and suddenly it looks like it might even be Zenith who have the momentum. Yeah, a couple of small pickoffs here, a couple of misplays, and LGD trying to no longer seem to be ahead. One of the 
issues with their line is Queen of Pain just as a hero isn't all that good for the five man because you can't really go in when there's this many disables. Telekinesis, Lasso, you've got your Puck, Silence as well as Coil. It's not really a good game for Queen of Pain to be picked in general and it's a hard hero to sort of get involved but that aside, LGD China had a, a really big lead that should have been able to secure them a good enough mid game. It, it's, it's Zenith who are the ones controlling the flow right now. And they even dodged that first gank top. You know, the, the first one where Yamate came top was completely spotted out. Didn't even find an opening. Delayed his, delayed his own, you know, farming in the process. But Zenith, they just tried and tried to get it. Eventually it worked. It kind of reminds you of IG even, where they had the three smoke ganks versus DK. None of them worked. And then they still found the openings. And five minutes later, Twan's just calmly strutting around by himself. Here we go. A blink in. But Ice 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 will force staff himself away. Now he eats a perch. This could be a bad fight for Zenith. They do have a gyrocopter here though. And he's throwing out the flat cannon. Yao gets focused. Yao not able to get his mech off in this fight. That's gonna hurt. Siler on the run. Will they he be able to escape? The missile needs to be focused down. A blink and another three here coil by Yamate. Now Miracle jumps in, unloads his ultimate, always saving it until after the coil. Great play from him. Siler on the run. A four step forward. Ice Ice Ice, he smells that kill. He can't quite find it. The bear will die and that kills oh. off Siler. Oh, that really hurts. The orb comes into the base, not even needed. Four heroes dead, and LGD. That window that they had, I think it's been firmly slammed shut at this point. LGD in a lot of trouble right now. They've still got a gold lead. I think that's going to be gone once it updates a bit, but oh my gosh, is Zenith just playing some amazing team fight and some just great coordination in these fights is what's coming down to. Yamate is going at the right time. X Freedom on that Undying. I mean, we sort of doubted how it would sort of scale, but right now, He's not being shut down at all, and despite sort of I, I think, knocking the pickoffs, it's still going well for Zenith. I, I think it, it, X Freedom isn't being initiated upon because who's yeah. going to go in first? It's Yao with the clockwork. But Yao is, has he started a fight? He's got he's in, initiated a few ganks, but hasn't actually started a big team fight yet. He's their initiator. We haven't seen him go in once first, and I think a lot of the ineffectiveness goes back to what you pointed out, which is. Level 1 Power Cogs, this is by far his best teamfight ability. Only level 1, hasn't really been used very effectively, he's had some openings. And for whatever reason, just hasn't quite found them. Whereas Zenith, their initiators, the Batrider, the Puck, are finding perfect openings every single fight. And then it's just plug and play for Miracle. Pop your flat cannon, always dropping the call down after the Dream Coil, and easy, easy kills for him. Now has an Aegis. Now could look towards a big item. I don't think he even needs to find this game. He could go for one, but I think even something like an MKB will be more than adequate. Yeah, to me, I think MKB is the safe way to play. Jar uh, Divine Wreck is more that super late game sort of, uh, we've got no backup plan, or maybe you're, maybe you're ahead and you can still go for it. But at this point, I don't think Xanth are in a position where they need to be taking a risk such as going for a Divine Rapier. Puck also with a side of Vice now. So the item progression all of a sudden for Xanth looks really, really good. What is he going to buy here? He's changing his treads out. I, I do like the fact that he's upgraded his boots. Uh, yeah, power treads. Tranquil boots actually suck in fights, and I feel like it's still one of those things that a lot of players are sort of forgetting or struggling to make the change with is you really want to change them when you're going into combat because they do nothing for you once you take damage. You're in actually incredibly slow. They don't give you many benefits in combat and the heal isn't really needed at this point in the game. Your team will have a mech. Your team will have an urn in most cases and uh, you have an undying as well. So I like this by Miracle. It's a small little change, not a big deal, but uh, he'll now spend the rest of his gold. And what has he picked up here? Oh, a Crystallis. Going, going Daedalus, which I think, again, is a fine choice. Just some damage item because LGD is not even scratching him. They're not able yeah. to go in on him anymore. Yeah, he's been having a huge impact. They've sort of been avoiding him. Every time, the thing is, Ice will, Ice, Ice Ice will be in the front lines with his bat rider. He won't even get the pick-offs. There we go. He's going to get pick off on his spirit bear. This is just animal cruelty right now. Yes, this poor, Lassu, poor bear. He hasn't found a lasso in the team fights on heroes, so I think he's just deciding, well, I'll just grab a bear here and there. Even in the previous team fights, he would blink in, not get a pick off, but they would throw spells at him, and then it's like, okay. Puck gets initiation, Gyrocopter goes in with a BKB, and Zenith don't even need the Lasso to win fights. Yeah, and Zenith are in such a commanding position at this point. Scythe of Vice now up on Yamate. Double Force Staff, double Blink Dagger. Ice has a Blink as well, or a Force Staff of his own, and could easily... We saw him steal the Queen of Pain Ultimate. That's probably still the biggest item to steal, but even something like a Disruption or a Demonic Purge to help deal with the Lone Druid Bear, or even the Hero to chase him down, could be huge. And LGD, they just don't feel mobile enough in these fights. At the end of the day, their lineup it was much more built around get your some early farm on your lone druid, hold on to your top lane, and get the levels you need in your clockwork, and just go push. Push with the armlet. Zenith did not have much counter push to really counter it, aside from, say, cooldown and illusory orb. And cooldown has a very long cooldown. It doesn't do a whole lot against the lone druid bear. But LGD's lineup, not really built to lose this many fights and then try and come back. It's not the kind of lineup that can do that very easily. Yeah, it really isn't. Heroes like Shadow Demon, Queen of Pain, and Lestrak, these are not mobile heroes. They're not all that good in 
So the team fight scenario with that big items. We're going to be seeing that a bit with Je with uh, Zhao Wei picking up a BKB on the track. Queen of Pain having side of Ice soon, but even Queen of Pain with a side of Ice really needs a BKB. And I feel this Orchid just was not a really useful pickup this game. You either need to go Orchid BKB or Scythe BKB because his BKB is going to be incredibly late. Uh, yeah, I think the Orchid's been useful. He's he's the fights would have been so much worse if the Batrider hadn't been silenced in like three of them. But I agree that he needs the BKB at this point, and have, not having I, it means he can't fight. I feel the fights were going well until he had the Orchid. That was when they started losing fights. Not because of the Orchid, but I feel <laughs> if he had a BKB in those fights instead of an Orchid, he could have done a whole lot more. Sure, there's a Lasso to go through, but that's what the Shadow Demon's for. He's the one getting Lasso or protecting against the Lasso. Well, Shadow Demon's been getting caught, so then you need the silence. I guess that's the, the other way to look at it. Uh, and at the end of the day, the BKB on Lashrak not going to do a whole lot against the Gyro with this amount of damage. Sure, you're magic immune, but the issue is you just die to the auto attacks. You just die to the yeah. flat cannon. And right now, Gyrocopter is going to be doing a lot of physical damage. He's, I think he's, has he got his completed Daedalus? Uh, yeah, flying out. Daedalus is completed. Wow. Already got the Demon Edge. He just, he just picked up the recipe in the Crystalis like two and a half minutes ago, three minutes ago. Now, now it's the Gyrocopter who wins the farming war. For a while there, it was a huge lead. I mean, he was like 30 CS ahead at one point, Siler was, but if the game goes late enough, Eventually, Zenith are going to outfarm you with the Gyrocopter, at least, and Queen of Pain just not getting the farm on her own, really, to keep up, and not having the items to contribute the way that a Gyro can. No, he, he really isn't, and for, for LGD, they've got to start wearing. It'll be interesting to see if this Assault Crash is actually going to help at all, but I, I just don't see it. There's not a whole lot of physical damage coming out apart from the Gyrocopter, and that sort of split shot, it sort of negates somewhat the Assault Crash. So I think all in all, LGD China... This Assault Crest is going to be sort of this last-ditch effort, and well, what do you do when you're in this desperate position? You go for that complexity smoke gank. Yeah, it feels it feels desperate right now for LGD. And if they if they don't have a great initiation, they're getting counter ganked and wiped by a Coil, by a Lasso, by a Gyro with the BKB. So going for this is very, very dangerous. Earlier in the game would have been fine, but now, not so much. And they won't find the opening. I think... I think this is the way to do it. If you don't find the perfect opening, sure, you're probably losing this late game anyway, but you're definitely losing if you dive the tower and they'll just back off. Yeah, they're not going to dive the tower. They're not even going to go try to take that T2 tower. They had four or five heroes top. They're like, nope, let's not go for this tower. We're only looking for a pickoff and then a retreat, and they're not even going to do that. So Gyrocopter still with Aegis is probably the big deterring factor for why they wouldn't even try the T2 tower, but even without an Aegis, it's very unlikely they can win a team fight right now. Ice 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 will calmly walk up onto the high ground here in the jungle. He'll pop his Firefly as well, and I guess they still haven't fixed that bug with the flying vision for Batrider. Uh, yeah, I guess not. He's still seeing pretty much everything. He's supposed to have reduced vision when he's in, uh, reduced AoE when he's in flying vision. It's been kind of a, a long-standing bug in Dota 2. Nothing to do with this game, though. I would say Ice 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 would have played equally well regardless, but just one of those random things. So Zenith, either way, five heroes grouped up bottom. They'll now go for the tier 2, and... Once they get under the tower, LGD can't really go in, because if they do, they just die to flat cannon. Yeah, it's... you don't even have to be hitting the... you're just hitting whoever's in the front lines, and then the supports at the back can be sustaining so much damage. Shadow Demon just has to be seen too far back to be of any use in a team fight. It's really a tough place to be for, for LGD. LGD may even try to start the fight, but already good position. We'll see a blink and a lasso. Came through the trees, did Ice Ice Ice. Find Silar, the hook is here. Catches out Miracle, he gets psyched up. They want to burst him now, but a four staff, one direction. Let's him pop his BKB and he's got lifesteal. He'll go to work. He is just pooping damage out of his rear end. Silar on the run. Shaoi to DDC, low as well. And here comes the cleanup crew. It comes from Yamate with a blink, a lasso, and now death for Shaoi. And on that note, GG for going the way of Zenith. They will take game one, they'll do it. I mean, let's say convincingly, because they, they lost the laning stage. They flat out lost, and they lost it badly, too, against a lineup that had a great timing push, a great mid-game. But LGD, they never found their footing. They never got going as five. This was an engine that just couldn't leave the train yard. And as a result, Zenith off to a 1-0 lead. Stead and Miracle, gotta say, guys, it felt like he fit them perfectly this game. Yeah, he played that Gyrocopter so well, and the amazing thing is, Zenith take that last team fight after the age of six by The life still pick up was the perfect choice there, because Zenith was starting off taking quite a lot of damage, but he just kept on auto-attacking his way to victory. T hit on, the, hit the Spirit Bear, hit whatever's standing next to you, and the flat cannons will do the damage, and it also killed him back up, and it was just an amazing comeback from Zenith. They were behind by 7.5k gold at one point, and they come back and just completely dismantle LGD China. Against a Lashrak with Max Edict and a Lone Druid with an early armlet. Every time Edict's off cooldown, a tower will die. 
to that lineup if it's executed properly and if Zenith can't prevent you from working on the tower. But Zenith, even though their first smoke gank failed, even though Yamate's rotation top failed, didn't matter. They just kept on going. They kept on trying. Eventually, they broke LGD. They found the opening. And once they found one, they found so much space for the gyro to farm. I also really like how Zenith, they abandoned the tri-lane and they went back to stacking and farming because they needed that. They needed Miracle to get really fat to win this game. And when it was all said and done, boy, did he ever get really fat. 7-0 and 14, the stand-in for first departure, doing it here for Zenith, the all uh well, the Singaporean stand-in, of course, replacing XY. Looking good. LGD China on the back foot now, 0-1 in this best of three.